In this video I wanted to share how I made this battery operated kitchen scale. As you can see uh, it can weigh the weights of various household items up to a kilogram. And one nice feature here is if I go and press this reset button, you'll see that it homes back into zero grams. So I'll go ahead and push that. It's back down to zero grams. And so for cooking and stuff, if you need to measure something out by weight, you know, you can just go in, fill it up. And it's now measuring uh, about 230 grams. If we go actually check the water level here, you can see that it's coming in at about 240 mils. When I go down and look at it uh, side on, I should probably lower the camera for that. So yes, the kitchen scale is weighing uh, about 228 grams. Uh, you can see here that the bottom of the meniscus is just coming up, uh, you know, just above 230 mils. Uh, given that water is one mil to one gram density, um, it's pretty accurate, there's a little bit of uncertainty in there, but for the uh, cheap hobbyist components that I'm using, I'm pretty happy with it. Before showing you how I assembled the kitchen scale, I just wanted to go over the inner workings, specifically how the load cell works with a HX711 amplifier chip to give out force readings that we can then process and display as a weight. Having a closer look at the load cell here, you'll notice that this one's rated for 5 kilograms. The one that I have in the kitchen scale is just rated for 1 kilogram because, I don't know, 5 kilograms just seems overkill. Um, and you'll notice that there's an arrow pointing downwards. So this arrow, regardless of the type of load cell that you use, should be orientated in the direction that you're applying the force. So for this setup, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be applying a downwards force, pulling down on this, um, and so that's why it's orientated in this direction. Looking at a side-on view of the load cell, you will notice that there's a couple of holes drilled out of the center here, um, and above and below here, you know, and they can't see it on the top of this one, but there's strain stress gauges on here. And so those are going to measure the very small deformation that occurs in the metal as you apply a force downwards. Now, this is only going to create a very minuscule voltage differential uh, on the order of millivolts. And so obviously the Arduino doesn't have the sensitivity to read those differences. So we're going to use the HX711 chip up here, and that's just going to amplify the signal so that it can be read cleanly on the Arduino here. The wiring for this setup is pretty straightforward, and fortunately the wire colors for load cells are fairly standardized. That being said, it is always good just to consult the data sheet in case you have something different to me. So I have red going to E+, black to E-, minus white to A minus and green to A plus. And then up the top we have the pretty straightforward connections of ground and VCC on either side. They're going to go to ground and 5 volts respectively on the Arduino. And then in the center we have SCK which is the white wire and that's going to A0. And then DT which is the green wire and that's going to go to A1 on the Arduino. As I mentioned earlier, water has a density of 1 gram to 1 mil. So we can measure out the volume and then know the weight based on that. So I'm going to go ahead and upload the calibration code. You need to be careful in that you can't apply any force in this until the script actually starts up and starts running. And then at that point, I'm going to attach this and hang it off. So this calibration program that I wrote, you can find in the description down below. Uh, essentially, we're just defining the pins that we've connected to. Um, creating an arbitrary calibration factor. This was actually the one that worked out for the one kilogram um, unit. I'm just going to go ahead and change this to a different value for now so that we can demonstrate. It doesn't really matter what number you choose. Um, and so yeah, this is the setup and then in the loop we're just going to go read the calibration value and if it's too high or too low we're going to use the keys down here to either increase or decrease the value in increments of 100, 10, or 1. So I'll go ahead and I'll upload this right now. And open up the serial monitor. So yes, it's asking us to remove all the weight from the scale. It's now set up. I'm now going to go attach the 750 gram mass. And 
and as you can see we're getting a reading of about 347 grams which is obviously incorrect so I'm going to go up here and I can't remember if I want to increase or decrease we'll do press A to increase it by 100 then press enter so that lowered it, um, lowered it by a little bit there so I'm going to go ahead and press Z you know a handful of times okay I pressed it way too many times there so yes it's a bit of an art form here jumping around um, I'm now going to go ahead and just change the calibration factor in increments of 10. So I press X, get it a little bit higher. Maybe one more time. Uh, okay, we're getting pretty close there. And now I'm going to go ahead and just use the increments of 1. So yes, we're getting, you know, th there's a little bit of uncertainty there, but uh, 749, 750 grams, it's all pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and say that our calibration factor is at 462 here. And so you're going to want to copy that value um, and save it for later. So just write it down on a piece of paper. Okay, now that we have the calibration factor, I'm going to go ahead and actually show you how I assembled this. And then we'll come back to the final program that's going to output the actual weighted reading to an LCD screen. I designed this black plastic frame in Fusion 360, uh, printed it out. I'll have the files down below, but depending on the co exact components you use, you may choose to slightly adjust it or make your own. In the various mounting holes, I've inserted these heat press threaded nuts uh, that are for an M3 bolt. And this isn't mandatory, you could just thread it into the 3D print, but it just adds a little bit of a professional finish to it, and it's more durable. As a platform for putting the items on top, I'm using an acrylic sheet. And in order to attach a load cell, I've just 3D printed this frame that I'm super gluing onto the surface of the acrylic sheet. And this is all pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going in and installing the various pieces. Uh, it is important to note, like I said before, the load cell does have a direction it needs to be installed in. So have a look at that arrow on it. And then at the front to output the information, I'm attaching this LCD screen and the screen brightness is controlled by a potentiometer at the back of the box. And finally I'm just attaching a battery with a switch in there and then this circuit board which I didn't actually film the soldering process of uh, gets a bit tedious to do but I have a wiring diagram here that you can copy for yourself since I'm not using the Arduino Uno board and instead I'm just using the same chip from it there's no easy way to upload the program to the chip as the Arduino Uno has this nice USB port so instead I'm using this FTDI breakout board that connects into the pins here and that's how I'm going to upload the program. You can do it a variety of different ways and they're kind of well documented online. So I won't really go over those steps because it's mostly tangential to this project. And there we have it, it's all put together. And here I have the final program, just like the calibration program, you can find this in the description down below. For the most part, it's the same. We're using the same HX711 library, as well as the Liquid Crystal library, which is the LCD screen library. In this line, you're going to want to change the calibration factor to whatever you found it to be in the calibration program. Um, I'm not going to change it from this because this was the value that I had for the one kilogram load cell. What I was previously demonstrating was for the five kilogram load cell, hence the difference in numbers. Um, the rest is just kind of initialization here and so forth. And then here, it's pretty straightforward. We're just getting the weight, measuring it from the uh, load cell and then outputting the weight in grams on the LCD screen. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that now. And there we have it, our own kitchen scale. And one thing I will just quickly say is I wouldn't actually recommend this if you're looking just for a cheap kitchen scale. You can go to Walmart and buy these for, you know, $15. The components for these, I, I had most of them lying on the shelf, but if you were to buy everything brand new, 
you'd probably be looking at about $50 in parts and then obviously your time as well. So it is just kind of a hobby project that you'd do for fun. Um, it's just a neat little thing to have, you know? You can go around, measure various, measure various things. Not sure how well the camera actually picks up the LCD screen. I hope it's okay. Uh, Rubik's Cube. So thanks for watching. Uh, for more information, you can just check out the description down below. And I'll see you next time.